Hi, you tankers. Dr. Albero. How are you? Let's talk about the third macronutrient today. Over the last couple of weeks, we've talked about carbohydrates and carbon fiber ratio and fats and saturated and unsaturated fats. Today is protein day. Get to the chopper. Got to have your protein. Protein is a molecule, as you know, as are the macronutrients, and proteins are made up of amino acids. Turns out there are 22 maybe 23, maybe 24, it depends what you read, who you believe, but basically there's 22 amino acids of which nine are considered essential. And essential in nutrition terms does not mean really important. It means your body cannot make them, so you have to eat them from external sources. As it turns out, all animal-based foods are sources of complete protein. They have all nine essential amino acids in them. What are all the animal-based foods? There's so many. No, there aren't. There's basically six animal-based foods. Beef, pork, poultry, fish, dairy, and eggs. That's it. Complete sources of protein. Plant-based foods. Oh my God, there's so many plant-based foods. Yeah, well, there's really six. Fruits, vegetables, beans, nuts, grains, and seeds. That's how I divide the food world. So. When people talk about complete versus incomplete proteins, the animal-based food world has complete proteins. And people always say that you can get um, protein from beans and nuts and seeds and what have you, but those are incomplete proteins. That is inaccurate. There is a website that you can go to that shows you exactly what is in every last tiny bit of food chemically, all the way down to every single tiny micronutrient. And most plant-based foods have all of the essential amino acids in them, just in much tiner, tinier quantities. Right? You take a big bite of steak, you get a big load of all the essential amino acids and proteins. You take a mouthful of broccoli, you still get all the essential amino acids. But in order to get enough of it in a day, you would have to eat a wheelbarrow of broccoli, which I've done, and you don't want to. Trust me on this one. What does all this mean functionally to you and me every day, protein-wise? Well, the key to eating protein is to get your protein from the healthiest sources. If you're going to get your protein from animal-based foods, then try to do it from the healthiest animal-based foods. Lean cuts of beef or pork, white meat poultry with no skin, low-fat dairy. And if you're gonna get your protein from plant-based sources, then natural plant-based foods, right? A donut is not a natural plant-based food. Okay, a mushroom, a bean, an almond, asparagus, those are natural plant-based foods. So try to get your protein from the healthiest sources. How much protein should I be getting, you say? Ah, let's suck down one of these huge protein. No, as it turns out, unless you are an Olympic weightlifter or a vegan, you get way more protein than you need on any given day. Your average recreational athlete, average person gets 100 grams of protein a day, about. And this has been constant in the United States for the last 100 years. And you only need 50 to 70. No matter what you eat, there's protein in everything. So don't worry so much about how am I gonna get all my protein, okay? No matter what they tell you, this is a fact. Worry much more about how much saturated fat you're taking in and what your carb to fiber ratio is in your food. You're going to get enough protein. Okay. If you want to know a little bit more about protein, I have a written blog that I talk a little bit more about it. Um, feel free to email me or what have you. Uh, thanks for tuning in and for being an Eat Tanker with me. And remember, protein is the macronutrient you have to worry about the least. Bye. See y'all later. Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista, baby. We don't need that.